Hi everyone, I'm Yaka from Design by Life and this is episode 8 of Mindset Matters. Today's guest is Karen Pethart from Combatis Elixirs. Welcome Karen, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you Yaka, it's so lovely to be here. I'm so excited about today's conversation because I've been waiting to have this chat with you for a long time. I am a customer of yours. You probably know that already from some from of the From almost orders. the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I use your beautiful mist as part of my daily mindfulness rituals. It is such a great reminder for creating new habits like being present in the now, which has been quite a struggle for me if I'm really honest with my super busy lifestyle so yes. I would love to find out a bit more about the business the idea where it came from and also the purpose and just what was your intention to to start a lovely business like that so for those that don't know you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit um, more about the purpose of Combatis. Thank you so I'm Karen and uh I started Combatis about um, three years ago now, um, but it really has just been an organic evolution. Um, what uh, my purpose, the, the purpose behind Combatis was really to share beautiful therapeutic grade essential oils in really uplifting and engaging ways to really inspire the positive and to be um, a tool, and as you described, um, it's very often used as a mindfulness tool in really enhancing that connection between the mind and the body. About four years ago, um, embarked in some formal studies in the areas of energetic healing and aromatherapy. Um, prior to that, I've always had an interest in holistic health and well-being and before having children um, I worked in fast-moving consumer goods working um, in branding and new product development so it is interesting um, that now I've created something for myself um, but after having children I didn't want to go back into that corporate world um, and I really wanted to create something um, that supported me but that I knew could help support other people as well because often we're drawn we're drawn to a business um, that is really, really resonates with ourselves first, and then, yeah. and then we know that we absolutely have something that we can share with others, because it's almost like we've we've travelled the journey. We're all still on a journey, um, but we're we're sort of better placed um, in some ways to be able to share what we've learnt with other people. Using essential oils um, for me personally. It was really powerful on not only a physical level but on an emotional level. Mm. Um, and using um, using the essential oils with intention um, sort of takes it to another another level again. And I was really inspired by the work of Louise Hay. Um, she talks a lot about positive affirmations and positive affirmations as a way to support self love. Um, so when I was creating um, the brand and the mists, I really wanted to um, create a holistic product in that with each of the mists that I've created um, using essential oils as a base and creating um, a blend that supports a particular mindset or emotional state, but combining that with an affirmation when I'm feeling that overwhelm and feeling like I can't get on top of things, <laughs> it's sometimes it, it's just that moment of consciousness and awareness to take a deep breath. Um, and so what I often do is take a deep breath, but use the mist in combination with that and take a moment to swap a negative thought for a more positive thought. And that's where the positive affirmations come Amen. in. And that's actually a really great reminder just how powerful words can be. And I mm. know this, this is a concept that's not necessarily embraced by everyone, but further down the track you realize that your words actually um, determine your reality and how you want to feel yes. every single day is a choice, a choice made by you. Absolutely. So, so for me, it's, it's, it's a great reminder, actually. I know that your products also come with the affirmations. There's a little card on, on them attached to them as well with some um, beautiful examples of what those words and affirmations could sound like. Um, 
to date, I, I have used it, but now I actually develop my own affirmation. And it really depends on mm. what challenge I'm up against that day. And I know that I want to set myself up for a good productive day or a happy day, or I might be dealing with some challenging um, people. So I actually tailor my affirmation according to that. But um, And that's beautiful. That's <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect and i think that's you know it's it's a key to understand that not everything will work for everyone this is not one size fits all and yes. and it's really up to you to experiment with what is it that will work for you at what point throughout that day that you're going through um you know your challenges because lifestyles are different and we know i might have a morning ritual but you can might have a um, afternoon ritual which is when you might need it the most yes but you know, affirmations and putting the words out there are definitely something that I believe works in the universe. And I have seen this firsthand when I put something out there and it actually came back and yes. it happened. So yes. I know that it might take a while to create a habit or break a habit, but yes. unless you give it a chance, you never know, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And there's just so much in that premise that what you think you feel, um, you show in terms of your behavior. And when you put that out to the universe, the universe will deliver it back. And a lot of the work that I've been doing and a lot of the connections that I've made have been in this area of self-care. Mm. And especially as women, working women, um, women with children, um, women do seem to, we take on a lot. Yes. <laughs> and often we are sort of mm. trying to survive in quite a male-orientated society in that um, it's very much driven by actions and plans and thinking and doing yeah. um, rather than just being. And often we do need to, to just we take, to take that care for ourselves to fill ourselves up because we can't serve from an empty vessel. And when we show ourselves love, the universe responds. And the universe responds and shows us love in so many different ways. And I don't just mean... Um, love in in terms of relationship love I just mean general generic love in terms of mm -hmm. the way that we make decisions from our heart yeah. or um, the way that we look at the beauty that's all around us yeah. so I think it is it can be so it can sound so simple that if we just change our thoughts we can change our world but it really is powerful so what I'm hearing is that mindset really plays a big role in, in life in general because you choose your own thoughts, which then will affect how you feel, think, and eventually what you create as a result of that. In yes. your business, um, when you started, can you see a bit of a journey of the mindset of an entrepreneur? Absolutely. And, and it's interesting in that it's interwoven because... In the same way that my mindset um, has created my business, within the business, um, mindset is integral to, to actually how it presents itself. So mm -hmm. the two are completely entwined. Yeah. Um, and when there are times when I'm feeling um, or have questions in my mind about where my business is heading or reminding myself why I'm doing it, I stop and it's my mindset that will dictate the next step. I think it's so critical and mm. um, it's about, for me it's about staying in that present moment. Um, it's about not letting those limiting beliefs acknowledge them and say yeah. thank you for coming along. <laughs> <laughs> stop you go trying now. to sabotage me. <laughs> mm. But as you said earlier as well, it's about a choice. And, and every day um, we make a choice um, and we can we consciously do that. But surely you would have had to deal with doubt. You know, you might have had this amazing idea for products that you knew were helping you. You started it. So you had that in-depth knowledge of just how much potential there is behind the product that you envisioned. Um, yes. But no doubt you had doubt <laughs> along Absolutely. the journey. I still have doubt every single day. <laughs> and, and so my question to you would be, in those moments of doubt that can be so debilitating and overpowering, how mm -hmm. do you choose courage 
and love over fear? I really tune inwards. Um, so I guess I take a moment and I've, and I've learned this over time and I'm still practicing, absolutely. But I take a moment just to really be aware of mm. that thought and that feeling and then decide um, how I can change out of that. And so a simple act of doing something can be a way of getting out of it as well, just to focus on a task that mm -hmm. I know I can get done or to go for a walk or to do some exercise or just something that can help get out of that funk because sometimes I think we can get caught up in our own mind and even though we're trying to think of, okay, no, I need to be positive in this moment, mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes I will just try and distract myself um, and, and to go and do something else and it just creates space. Or just yeah. focus on a creative project at that moment to take attention away from, mm. well, I'm feeling concerned or I'm having doubt over this area. I often put it on hold and mm. allow myself to come back to it because often I think I've also developed an awareness about when I am in that frame of mind, I'm actually not um, going to be productive and I'm not going mm. to solve it in a positive way. Mm. So sometimes just pausing and going away from it and coming back to it with fresh eyes mm. and, and a fresh mindset can be really helpful. Yeah. Have you ever made a decision based on fear that then you realize later down the track it was not the right one? And can you give us an example? <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> Look, um, Oh, let me think. I know that I've chosen jobs in the past um, for that reason. Mm. Um, and not necessarily consciously at the time, but knowing that I had to generate an income and mm. there was um, a perfectly viable job, and yes, to, mm. to take that job. I felt compelled to do some advertising and to update some labels and all sorts of different things that was probably, I was probably doing it out mm -hmm. of the fear that if I don't do something, my competitors might do it first. Yeah. Um, so going ahead with something mm -hmm. like that and spending time and energy and money when really the solution instead would have been just to sit in a state of being patient and waiting for it to unfold. Rather, So sometimes mm -hmm. I have um, jumped into something because... I thought it's something I should be doing, yeah. whereas we shouldn't say that word should. Should <laughs> indicates that we've made a mistake or we're doing something wrong if we, if we don't do that. We might be looking at our own journey and go, hey, we're not quite where we really would like to be. And we look to someone else, a competitor or someone that we aspire to and we see them doing incredible things and we feel compelled that we should be there. So, you know, let's push, push, push and, and yes. overextend ourselves and let's do that out of the fear of missing out or fear of That's being right. less or a yes. fear of being not good enough. And I think, you know, these are really great examples uh, in that particular um, instance for someone who might be in that position right now to come back again to the present moment and also acknowledge everything that they have done. Because we mm -hmm. so often don't celebrate just how much we have already achieved and just how amazingly well we've done to that point in time. <laughs> It's Absolutely, and that we are all on a different journey. Mm. We cannot possibly begin to compare ourselves to other people. And I now have um, two children, so mm. it often is a really blatant reminder to me, um, mm. do I want to instill those behaviours um, and that type of thinking to my children? Um, I want to inspire them to mm. be the best version of themselves, and that's all we can ever really mm. do and to celebrate who we are. Absolutely. And the fact that we got to this point <laughs> yes. is a celebration. <laughs> it's a massive achievement, absolutely. You know, speaking of words to live by um, and the affirmations and the power of words, um, <laughs> are there any that you could share with us that you live by? The, wor the words that I live by, it's very, it's actually, I don't know, I sometimes think it's so simple, but I have them up on a huge plaque on, on our wall. Love is all you need. When we look at life from our heart space and we look at life with love, it's almost like everything falls into place. And, th and that's 
starts yeah. with self-love. It yeah. starts with appreci- loving and appreciating ourselves. Um, so for me, I feel like that's, that's where we start. Mm. That's, and, and from there, the magic happens. But it's really appreciating that we can have all the things in the world. Um, and, you know, I, I know that a lot of people watching this will already um, probably have that awareness that happiness is not um, the things, the material things that we have in our life. We can look at life in such a positive way if we're coming from that space of yeah. love. Absolutely. So for me, it's a very, I feel it's simple, but it's so powerful. It's so powerful. So how do you practice that daily? Like how does it look like choosing love or living by the words of love is all you need in your life? I have a daily um, morning ritual for me and that involves um, meditation, Mm -hmm. whether it's um, a 10 or 20 minute practice, that's a not negotiable. I I do that for myself every day and then I will either um, walk or run. I love to move, I need to move Mm -hmm. or I can get very cranky <laughs> or if I if, if I don't I mean I don't run every day but if I'm not doing that I'm doing some yoga poses or something just to move and it might only be for 10 minutes the energy then that I'm bringing with me um, can help in those situations when it does get a bit challenging and to use kind words that's something that we talk a lot about in our um, household <laughs> yeah. um, is to use kind words and to if somebody is having if you, if you know that somebody is is being um, critical or short or mm. irritated that it's not don't take it personally mm. um, and try not to react to that because we don't know what's going on in other people's worlds and we don't know what may have happened in their their day or in their what's happening in their family so we can't we can't be judgmental, mm. but in those situations to offer compassion and to offer kind words where we can. Mm. That's a beautiful way of raising children, Karen. I, I really love that. That's a good tip for any of you guys who do have kids at home. Um, you know, as simple as using kind words, being the rule. <laughs> I, I'll take that any day. <laughs> and they test, they look, my kids, are one, they're beautiful and wonderful, mm. but it's, it's a test because I can think mm. I'm this woman who's being positive and is establishing this business all around positivity. I can imagine there are some mornings where my kids might <laughs> say to me, Mom, <laughs> You're raising your voice. Do you think people would be listening to you <laughs> and, and buying your products if they knew that you were doing this? <laughs> well, th- th- that sounds very familiar. I mean, I, I, I do think myself that I am quite calm most of the days. But, I mean, we all have off days. Absolutely. And, and I think we are probably the most vulnerable with people that we love and are close to us. For anyone who is listening, who might be in a similar position to yours, building a business, being really excited about the idea of of their business, but feeling like they're really, really stuck with that idea or stuck with the part of that um, work and the build. And they think, ah, this is just not worth it. I just I'm not good enough, I want to pack up. What would you say to them? Oh, my goodness. I'd say be patient, (laughs) be kind to yourself, um, and to remember why you started the journey um, and to ask yourself what can you do to serve others because I think when we take the... um, take the emphasis off ourselves and how we're feeling and just remind ourselves of why we started doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And no matter what it is that you're doing, how can you serve others? Because when we start to look at it in that light, well, for me anyway, mm-hmm. it just feels different. Suddenly it feels lighter and it feels more like I'm actually, I don't need to get concerned so much about the overwhelm and whether it's going to be successful or not. Mm. I'll just take one step at a time. And if I'm serving others and if I'm creating something that will help others, then bit by bit I'm achieving. And and it's just not to put that pressure. I think we can put so much pressure on ourselves just Mm. to take a little bit of that pressure off. And the other thing just from personal experience um, 
is when you are feeling a bit stuck, mm. just pause and ask yourself, are you taking care of yourself? Mm. How am I feeling about me? Because I know the times that I've been irritated and just running to deadlines and putting myself through lots of pressure. I, mm. I stop and I realise that I've missed something, that I haven't been stopping to take the time for myself. And it comes mm. back to that, that whole premise around we can only give to others when we fill up and ourselves first. Ourselves. Yeah, that's such a great reminder. Um, thank you so much, Karen. There has been so oh, many words of wisdom. I absolutely adore you. And please keep up the great work with Combatis because I can't wait to see what's next. Speaking yes, of what's you. next, <laughs> is there anything you would like to share with us? Is there a big vision for 2017 for Combatis? Yes, look, I would... Um, oh, there's There's... There's lots of things I'd love to see Combatis doing. I, what I've, I love doing with the business is connecting with like-minded people. So I've, I've loved the connection with you, Yaka. I've loved the connection with people who are in this space of personal development, self-awareness, helping other people to live a really purposeful life. Mm. So I really just hope to, to be able to continue to make those connections. Um, I'd like to be able to share my myths within that beautiful health and wellness space and maybe get into um, to make some more connections and reach out to a lot of the retreats. Mm. Um, and, yeah. But look, I try and sit in this space where if I'm just true to what it is that I want to do with the mists, I'm, I'm really just open to the organic evolution. Mm. Um, whilst I do have... Um, goals and absolutely I would love to increase the business and I just I'm also really open to what's next because I'm really open to where it's taken me to this point I could never have imagined mm. so I just really want to stay open to the possibilities of mm. where I can go next and for me it's just been a beautiful personal development um, journey as well mm. which I think most people running their own businesses find that I don't think you can expect <laughs> that really this is about you. This is about personal development um, and it's just, it's, it's magical how it unfolds. So speaking of collaborations and speaking of uh, connecting with um, other lovely, lovely people out there, where can people find you? My online home is uh, combatus.com.au and I'm also um, active on Facebook and Instagram um, where I share some of the affirmations and just some information about the oils. So I'd love to connect mm -hmm. with people on those platforms and I love it when people share with me how they're using the oils um, and how they're using their mists because that's really beautiful that, and it really helps mm -hmm. other people because then they can yeah. imagine themselves doing the same thing and someone can share what they have in their toolbox, their little self-care toolbox. And that just helps other people and inspires them to do the same. Absolutely. Um, well, we will share all your links in um, the yeah. blog post and also on YouTube. And I um, am really excited to announce that Karen is actually offering 10% off on all her mists on her website. So I will be sure to share that link as well so people can take up your beautiful and generous offer. Thank you so much, Karen. This has Thank been you. such a pleasure and I really enjoyed hearing a story behind an incredible brand that I love and admire. So thank you for being of service to myself and to all of us. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Yaka. Thank you.